when my son, my second son was born, I looked at him in the face and I said, wow. So if there was no power, this one too would have been called a miscarriage. The other time I showed up, I wanted to preach. They used a the background color. It was like pepper. The other one was like onions. I looked at them and said, you don't have intelligence. You need intelligence about color. All this background they use when I preach, I gave them myself. I gave them myself. Now, those who are watching online, look at it. It appears crystal clear. And when I sat with the media people, I told them, how many news outlets do you watch? I listed more than five global news outlets that carry the highest level excellence. That's not part of Bible. That's mental power. There is a color that if you see, you want to watch. There is another color when you see it's like a shrine, you leave it. Even if the person is talking with the tongue of an angel, you need mind to know those. The people casting news, I called them. I said, how many journalists do you know? And I was listing global journalists for them. A list journalists that if they talk, if they talk in two hours, they have more than 500,000 views because of comportment. Even when they sit down, I was showing them body language. When they sit down, the way they put their hands. Sometimes they carry a pen, they are not writing. All of that is comportment. You know how to be appealing to those. It's mental power. But you can't access it if you don't study. That's why you need to increase your menu. Balanced diet is not only for your body, it's for your mind. How do you build relational power? Is by sustaining integrity. You say one today, say another one tomorrow. People will become careful of you because they want to defend you while they are in the heat of the battle. You will now call them aside and say, I'm sorry, that thing I said is not like that. Really? And you allowed us to get to this level. They will never stand with you again. Tonight, I want to share with us on power for all round victory. Brothers and sisters, trust me, you need power. And you need a lot of power. One of the things that shook me when I studied my Bible was the fact that even the Son of God, when he became a man, he needed power to fulfill destiny. It made me understand the significance of power for meaningful existence. John chapter 1 from verse 1, he said, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. He said the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shined in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. If you take time to look at this scripture carefully, four major credentials were outlined. Number one, the Bible said he was in the beginning. So he has the advantage of preeminence. He came before everything that was made. And he was not just there in the beginning, the Bible referred to him as God. That means he's the author of creation. That is why he reiterated it and said he was creator. He said all things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. So he was preeminent. He was creator. And he didn't stop there. He went further to say in him was life. So he was the author and the source of life. He animates reality. And he still didn't stop there. And he said that light was the light of men. So he's the one that gives meaning to creation. So he is preeminent. He is creator. He is the source of life. And he is the meaning of creation. That means without him, nothing created can have meaning. This was the robust credential of this personality introduced here. Lo and behold, it took on flesh in verse 14 and the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. And this great personality walked on the earth for 30 years without impact. Nobody knew him. At best, they addressed him as carpenter. How can God be around for 30 years and nobody knew him? How can God be around for 30 years and they introduced him only as a carpenter? Now, it's important to understand when you are looking at Jesus, Jesus is not just God. He is the pattern man. He reveals to you 
what a man should be. So some of the things he subjected himself to is to educate you. So if you are a man and you have not accessed power, you will be irrelevant. That was what the first 30 years of his life was meant to teach humanity. Because for 30 years, as a man, he had no impact until suddenly. The Bible said in John 3, from verse 15 to 17, that as he was baptized, the Holy Ghost descended like a dove. Matthew 3, 15 to 17. And a voice came from heaven. This is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. And in Matthew 4, 1, he said, that same spirit that drew, spoke, drove him to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. You'll find the same scripture in Luke chapter 4, verse 1. And then in verse 14, something happened. The Bible said he returned in the power of the Spirit. Immediately he returned in the power of the Spirit. Impact began. He went straight to the tabernacle. Verse 18, Luke 4. And he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me. And he began to read out dimensions of exploit. What he didn't do in 30 years, suddenly began to happen. In fact, if you read the same account in Matthew 4, verse 14 and 15, the Bible said the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentile, the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. I thought it was introduced as the light of men. That means the light was there, but it never shone. Until power came. The moment power came, the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentile, the people that sat in darkness have seen. So what were they seeing for the last 30 years? They were seeing a God that was not manifesting power. And until he began to manifest power, he couldn't make impact. This is why some of us are the way we are. We are supposed to be the answer for our generation. But power has not been accessed. Available, but not accessed. This is why we are grossly limited. If this is the case for Jesus, the creator of the earth of the earth, do you think it will be different for you? Until power came, there was no impact. Guess what happened? After he got access to power, he lived for another three and a half years. Everything you read in the Bible, more than 90% of it were the documentation of what happened after power. So what he did in one year was equivalent to 10 years without power. The life of three and a half years was more impactful than the life of 30 years. I, I, are you seeing what's going on here? That is to let you know the significance of power. If you read Matthew and Mark, Matthew, Matthew and Luke, the first two chapters spoke about Jesus' birth and maturity to the age of 30. From chapter 3, that's when power came. And that was the whole thing about his life. That means the totality of Jesus' life was significantly the life he lived in power. Matthew alone has 28 chapters. Three dedicated to first 30 years. And 25 dedicated to three and a half years. That is the significance of power. Now, there is so much to learn from the first 30 years of Jesus Christ. For example, the ability to stay humble. Because although he was creator, he lived like a man for 30 years. For example, he showed the ability to follow God's blueprint. Because there were many things he could do, but he waited for the time appointed of the Father. I'm not saying those years were useless, but I'm saying as far as ordination and impact is concerned you need power to make a difference please make up your mind not to live a powerless life if you live a powerless life you will not just be defeated you will not fulfill destiny this is why tonight i've come to teach you certain things about the different dimensions of power that makes for victorious existence now before i go into those dimensions of power because I'm going to teach on five of them. Let me show you a few significances of power in addition to the introduction I've given. Number one, power is the key for the fulfillment of destiny and ordination. Jeremiah 1, 
from verse 5 to 7. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. But this prophet to the nations will not amount to anything except as power comes. Go to the next verse. We are going to read up to verse 10. Be fast. Verse 6. He said, Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I'm a child. That's a prophet to the nations. Cannot speak. That is why you need power. He said, But the Lord said unto him, Say not, I'm a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Next verse. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Verse 9. Then the Lord put forth. <laughs> That's where the nation begins from. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my word in your mouth. See, something must touch you for you to make a difference. Verse 9. See, I have this day set thee, this day, the day when power came. I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. But I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. If power does not come, but the nation cannot be fulfilled. You may be known before you were formed, but the day you are set forth is the day power comes. This is why you cannot rest until you are empowered. Power is the key to ordination. I quoted for you already. Luke 4, 14. He returned in the power of the Spirit. Matthew 4, 15. The land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. This is why the apostles, Jesus told them, don't run out with lecture notes. I know you walked with me for three and a half years. Lecture notes can't change your world. He said in Luke 24, 49, tarry until you are endued with power from on high. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, not many days from now, you shall receive the Holy Ghost, not and speech. Don't go out delivering speeches. They will cut off your tongue. You shall receive the Holy Ghost and what? Power. And you shall be witnesses. Their destiny was to be witnesses, but it took power for it to happen. I don't know what you were ordained for. But you will not walk out of this service tonight except as there is a fresh baptism of power. educate you is to cook you I came to cook you tonight with power because see some may not like your face but their presence counts for nothing that's why I told Jeremiah don't be afraid of their faces they will gang up against you it will amount to nothing he said though they shall gather it shall not be by me he said every tongue that rises against you in judgment thou shalt condemn although the enemy may come in he said as a flood the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard. The standard of God is the standard of power. That is why he said, gather together, you will scatter. Take counsel together, it shall come to know. Speak a word, it shall not stand. 
for the shout of a king. Mara Patekesia, Vere Tatoria, that thing that has been stopping you, they go down tonight by the power of God. For a while, I need to step down the voltage so I can go far. There's a journey. Power is the key for ordination. See, the Bible said, even the hair of your head is numbered. God knows your hair. Is it you? He's not aware of. You didn't come here by accident. Before you came, something was written. You came to fulfill it. You are not an accident. You are purpose finding expression. You are an errand from eternity. God had something in mind. The only way he could give expression to you was to shoot you to the earth. And nothing can stop you. Because from tonight, you will step into the corridors of power. Sit down for a moment. Power is the key. See, when you catch the power, fear dies. Because you know that even if hell breaks loose, it can't be stopped. That's how power works. Nothing can stop you. Number two, purpose of power. Power is the basis for accessing your inheritance. God is not a reckless father. He has inheritances for you and I. So that we have things that we receive on account of his love. But it will take for it to be delivered unto you. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 24. He say, rise ye up. Take up thy journey. Go beyond the river Anon. Behold, I have given unto you Sihon the Amorite, king of Heshbon. Begin to contend with him and possess the land. The land has been given to you, but you need power to take over. See, your inheritances are a gift from God, but it takes power for you to access it. Because the devil will rise up against you. This is why God empowers us. My God, you think the devil wants you to walk in your glorious destiny? No. Anybody you see fulfilling destiny, the devil tried everything. It didn't work. Possess the land. See, somebody will possess something tonight. He said, I've seen an abomination on the face of the earth. Princes are trekking. White beggars are riding on horses. Why? Princes can't possess their possession. But a generation of possessors will rise from here tonight. The third significance of power is that power guarantees protection. There are arrows. Listen, we are fought night and day. We are here because there's nothing the devil can do about it. We are fought rest on every side. Luke 11, 21 to 23. When a strong man keeps his house, his gifts, his possessions are in safety. So you need to be a strong man to keep your house. And it's not just enough to be a strong man. You need to keep growing in strength. Because you will keep your house until a stronger man shows up. He said that man will bind you and then take your spoil. But what now happens when the man shows up and discover you are stronger? You will collide with him, subdue him. He will not just repent. When a thief is caught, he will repay sevenfold. So you will divide the spoils of the other people that he has not looted. There are enormous things that we have that the devil is jealous of. The favor on your life, the wisdom on your life, the resources that God has given you, the influence God has given you, the devil wants to choke them. You need power to keep everything with you so that none is lost. Jesus said, all that you have given me, none has been lost. No one was lost. There was power to keep. So there is a power to possess and there is a power to keep that which is possessed. This is why you need power. You will not lose anything in your lifetime.
the fourth significance of power is that power is the key for sustainable impact. Nobody is making impact by luck. There is no such thing as luck in the world of impact. Everybody you see making impact is making impact by a dimension of power. Daniel eleven thirty two. They that do know their God, they shall be strong, and they shall what do exploit. Exploit is a function of strength. They that do know their God, they shall be strong, and they shall do exploit. If you are not making impact, it means there is a, a deficiency in a dimension of power. Number five, significance of power. Power is the key for making positive influence. You can't influence people without power. You don't influence people because you are a good talker. When you see men submit, it's because a power compels it. He said, through the greatness of thy power, shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. You need to influence people, and you must, because you have a message for your generation. The world needs to accept Jesus from your mouth. You have other businesses and other ventures that you need to sell out in order to have a, 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 a meaningful existence. Do you understand? That real estate won't prosper because you dress in suit. It will prosper because there's an acaso on your lips. When you talk, men have no choice. You don't get it. It takes power. Go into the highway and compel them. Men are compelled. And when you find anybody comparing men, there's a power. First Chronicles 12 verse 22. Daily, men joined themselves to David until his host became like the host of God. Daily, men join themselves. When you find somebody influencing a generation, there is a force. That's why I say, my horn has thou exalted like the horn of the unicorn. For you have anointed me with fresh oil. It takes power for your generation to hear you. Who told you people follow people because they speak well? There's a power. There's a power. There's a power. This is why you cannot settle with powerless existence. Hate it! Go and look at Jesus' ministry. Two thirds of his ministry was a demonstration of power. Two thirds. It was written about me to do your will. Oh God, I come in the volumes. I come in the volume of the books. It was written. And we need a lot of it. Jesus wanted to send his disciples to go influence their world. He said, Daddy, until you are endued with power. I know you know what to say, but power must be encoded into your words. And when the Holy Ghost came, they were baptized with power. That same day, the Bible said, Peter spoke. Acts 2, 37. 3,000 was added to the church. The next time Peter spoke, Acts 4, verse 4. 4,000 was added to the church. The next time they spoke, Acts 6, 7, even a great company of the priests became obedient to the faith and it became impossible for them to be together. So they had to separate and Philip went to Samaria. Acts 8, verse 1 to 5, he spoke and the whole city was filled with joy. Acts 13, verse 44, Paul spoke, the whole city came under his influence. What type of thing is that? It's a power. Thank God for billboard. Thank God for media advert. But if there is no anakazo, you are joking. The first type of evangelism is power evangelism. When they heard him, he said they were pricked in their hearts. And on their own, they said, men and brethren, what shall we do to be saved? We want to follow everything you have said. It took power. Fifth significance of power. You can't help others except you are empowered. 
I've illustrated for you here before. A man sitting on the ground can't lift another up. He must stand first. Only powerful men can help others. No powerless man has the capacity to help others. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. The word doing good, there's the word philanthropy. It takes power to be a philanthropist. There are many people who want to help the hungry. They don't have power. There are many people who want to help the poor. They don't have power. There are many persons who want to help the sick. They don't have power. This is why the church of Jesus is a church of power. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. The kingdom of God is not in words. It's in the demonstration of power. When I came unto you, I did not come with excellency of speech declaring unto you the counsel of God. I came in the demonstration of the spirit and of power. I choose to know nothing among you save Christ and him crucified. My preaching and my teaching, they were not with enticing words of man's wisdom. They were the demonstrations. The demonstration of the spirit and of power. The move of God is the move of power. Too many talkers. That's why nobody is helped. People are there for one year serving God, but they are sick. They are in sin. They are suffering. We need a fresh baptism. We need a fresh baptism. We need a fresh baptism. The apostles knew that a point came. Their witness was not enough. And he said they returned to their own company. And said, Father, behold their threatenings. Behold their threatenings. He said, grant that by stretching forth thy hands. That signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy son Jesus. And in Acts 4.33, he said with great power. With great power. God gave witness of the resurrection of Jesus and great grace was upon them with great power. If there is no great power, there can be no great witness. Nobody is helped without power. I decree over you tonight, everything making you powerless goes down now. when I look at our generation we have not seen anything and we are talking somebody will come and say better pursue character all this power, power, have we seen power? I'm not against character I'm an advocate of character Jesus manifested character for 30 years before power but wait a minute, have you seen power? which power have you seen? Joshua 10 verse 12 Israel was fighting in war and Joshua stood in the public, stretched forth his hand, let the sun remain upon the mountains of Ajalo. Let the moon remain upon the valley of Gibeon. And he said the sun did not make haste to go down. That is power, the ability to rule the constellation. Have we seen power? Moses stretched his rod and the Red Sea parted. And the Bible said in Hebrews 11 verse 11, it said by faith they walked through the Red Sea on dry ground, which the Egyptians are saying to do, perished. That's power. Have we seen power? Jesus showed up in the grave of Lazarus and he said, Lazarus, come forth. He said, he that was dead came back to life. That is power. Jesus carried five loaves and two fish, broke them, take, give them. Five thousand men were fed. That is power. Our generation have not seen power. He said, time will fail me to speak of Gideon, to speak of Barak, of Jephthah, of Samson, of David and the prophet who through faith subdued kingdoms, obtained promises, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire. Weak men were made valiant in battle and they put to flight the armies of the alien. That is power. We have not seen power. We need to cry for dimensions of power that are eternal. A generation hungry to see the hand of God must appear again. He said in Exodus 3 verse 20, I will stretch forth my hand and strike Egypt with all of my sons and my wonders. Then Pharaoh will let you go. And Moses showed up and told Pharaoh, let my people go that they may serve me. Exodus 12 verse 12, and God walked through Egypt and judged the cause of Egypt and they let Israel go. That is power. Oh, Adonai. 
and I said wow so if there was no power this one too would have been called a miscarriage can you imagine that's how ordinations are wasted amniotic fluid is too much how baby is about to come out premature how imagine if the power of God didn't go to work you will not lose anything anymore. Let's step down a little so that we can join it. So that we can join it. You need power to help others. And trust me, many need help. That's why we won't rest until we have power. This thing is not about selfishness. It's about kingdom. It's about purpose. That's why you need it. You need power. Many will die if you have no power. Many will suffer if you have no power. This is why God is empowering us. Our power is the liberty for many who are oppressed. Even creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Who are the sons of God? They are those who carry the power of the Holy Ghost. The sixth purpose of power is for leadership and the ability to give direction. God wanted a leader to deliver Israel. What he needed was not lecture notes. He said Moses, Exodus 3 from verse 1 to 7, came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There he saw a bush burning that was not consumed. And he said, I will turn to see this great sight. And he heard the voice, take up thy sandals. He said, where you are standing is holy ground. And from that encounter, God began to introduce him to power. Drop thy rod. He dropped the rod. He became a serpent. Pick it by the tail. Put your hand in between your, your navel. He put it inside. Brought it out. It was leprous. Put it again. He put it. Brought it out. It became normal. 
pour water on the ground, it became blood. He said, now go tell them, I am that I am have sent you. You can't lead people without power. Otherwise, they'll become victims and casualties of war. When they were walking through the wilderness, many nations came against them. But there was power to deliver. They had many needs. There was power to provide. He said, when he led them out of the wilderness, he said, he caused the rock to bring out water for them. He cleaved the rock also. The waters gushed out. They needed food in the wilderness. Manna showed up. They needed meat. Quails came. Even the clothes they wore, the Bible said they grew with it. Their sandals did not weary out. There was a power sustaining it. And he said, there was none feeble amongst their tribes. They would have all perished in the wilderness. Do you know the nations that fought them? Go and read about the kingdom of the Amorites. When the Bible spoke about Sihon, the king of the Amorites, and Og, the king of Bashan. Go and read about the people of Bashan. The Bible says some of them were like leopards. Some of them were beastly. The, the Bible called them beastly men. A man shows up like a tiger. Those are the kind of men that come to work. You need power. When they sent spies to look at the promised land, the Bible said the spies that analyzed based on fact say we were like grasshoppers before them. They were not lying. The only problem was that God said they didn't analyze by faith. They analyzed fact and truly they were like grasshoppers. But there was something they carried that made them subdue their enemies. Don't attempt to lead people when you have no power. If you don't die, they will die. You need power for leadership. And finally, you need power to exercise dominion. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give unto you power to step upon serpents and scorpions and upon every deadly thing and none shall by any means hurt thee. Without power, there can be no dominion. This is why you need power. And you need a lot of power. Your ordination depends on it. Accessing your heritage depends on it. Preserving what God has given to you depends on it. Making sustainable impact depends on it. Influencing your generation depends on it. Helping others depends on it. Leadership depends on it. And dominion depends on it. I will not live without power. Go and read your Bible. Everybody who made impact, made impact by power. And you too will go by power. You will go by power. Lower that volume. I want to, to calm down a little. So that we can cover some mileage. My God, something is brewing in my spirit. It's like a hurricane. And I sense a witness now. Most of you will leave this meeting. Something will come on you. Something will walk with you. Mantles will be released upon you. of power that anybody who will live victoriously must have. The first is spiritual power. Write it down. The second is mental power. The third is economic or financial power. The fourth is relational power. And the fifth is governmental power. In 
the case of governmental power, is either you are enthroned or you are vitally connected to somebody who is enthroned. And I'll deal with it when I come there. Please, if you will have all round victory, you need to possess these five kinds of power. Let's take it one after the other. I've shown you the significances of power. Any and all of these powers can generate any of those significances. That's why I grouped the significance together. Now let me show you how to access these five dimensions of power because you will need it. Spiritual power. There are three basic ways of accessing spiritual power. The first is revelation. The second is consciousness. And the third is consecration. Anybody that has these three things will walk in spiritual power. You must have a revelation of who your God is. You must have a revelation of what your God has done for you. And you must have a revelation of who your God has made you. These are the three categories of revelations you must have to walk in power. You must have a revelation of who your God is. You must have a revelation of what your God has done for you. And you must have a revelation of who your God has made you. If you don't have any of these three revelations, forget about power. Daniel 11, 32. It said, they that do know their God. It said, they shall be strong and do exploit. So if you don't know your God, you will not walk in power. And I've taken time here to teach you exhaustively the dimensions of God. From his essential dimensions to his moral dimensions and even his offices. We have taught here that God is eternal. God is unchangeable. God is self-existent. God is omnipotent. God is omniscient. God is omnipresent. And God is omnibenevolent as his essential attributes. That's who he is. And there's none who possess all of these qualities. We have also taught here concerning God's moral attributes that God is holy, that God is love, that God is righteous, and that God is faithful. And we have also taught from the offices of God that God is creator. And as creator, he has power to produce something out of nothing. As a matter of fact, everything out of nothing. And we have also taught that God is the author of life. Those are his offices. And so everyone who knows who God is can build certain level of assurance in God. I gave you illustration of how David said, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leaded me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. And he kept analyzing and analyzing. And he said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. He knows God is omnipresent. Anywhere he is, God is there. He said, even in the presence of my enemies, my cup runneth over. My enemies don't have to die for me to succeed. They will be present and they will be ineffective as far as my ordination is concerned. Why was he saying that? Because he knew who his God was. That's why he began from Psalm 33 verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. So you must know who your God is for you to walk in power. You need that revelation. And then you need to know what your God has done for you. If you don't know what your God has done for you, if you don't know what your God has given to you, you will still walk in lack and deficiency. Second Peter 1 verse 3 and 4, it says, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness all things not some all things that means anything you need for life and godliness has already been provided he said but it is through the knowledge of him that has called you to glory and to virtue so the reason some are not working in power is because they don't know what god has given to them so they are asking for what they already have and if you ask for what you already have is a sign that you don't know you have it so you will walk in lack first corinthians chapter 3 verse 21 it says all things 
are yours. All things are yours. So we don't beg anymore. We rule because we are in possession of all things. We are not people who should lack. God has given us all things. Paul was speaking about this matter in Romans 8.32. He said, if he did not withhold his only begotten son, but freely gave him for us, how shall he not with him give us all things? So as far as Paul was concerned, we don't have need for anything. Anything we desire, we bring it forth. That's why I said, I know how to abound and I know how to abase. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. He knows what he has. Too many Christians don't know what they have. Have you been in that place before where you have comb in your hand and you are looking for it? And you are angry with everybody. You are not aware that you have it. And if you don't know you have it, you will be frustrated seeking what you already have. This is why the gospel must be taught. Christians must know that they have the anointing that Jesus had. The Bible said in Acts 10, 38, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. In Acts 1, 8, it says you and I were anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. The Bible taught also that the same faith that Jesus has is the faith that we have. Galatians 2.20, I have the faith of the Son of God. The Bible also taught that the same life that Jesus has is the same life you and I have. I'm just showing you the things God has given to you already. 1 John 5, verse 11 to 13, He said God has given unto us eternal life. He said this is the record, God has given unto us eternal life. And he said this life is in the Son. Whoever has the Son has life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. So the life Jesus had is the same life I have now. My life will not be edited for all eternity. When the rapture takes place, this body will be changed, but the life remains the same. Because it's the life of Jesus that is in you now. How can you fail? And that's not all. Glory to God. You have the anointing of Jesus. You have the faith of Jesus. You have the life of Jesus. And every other thing that Jesus has, you have it. Because Christ in you is the hope of glory. You need to know what you have in God. If you have all of that, is it material things that will be a challenge? No. He has given you the things that really matter. Do you know you have the righteousness of Christ? You don't have your own righteousness. You have the righteousness of Jesus. Living righteous is to practice the righteousness of Christ. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, He made him that was without sin to become sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. And in Romans 5, 17, He said that He has given us the gift of righteousness. For what reason? That we may reign in life. But believers who have the anointing of Jesus, the faith of Jesus, the life of Jesus, the righteousness of Jesus, are still walking with the mentality of powerlessness. What did Jesus have that you don't have that makes you feel you cannot do what Jesus did? Jesus himself speaking in John 14, 12, he said, the works that I do, he said, you shall do also, and greater works than this shall you do. Why was he saying that? Because everything he has, you have. And when he was leaving the earth, even his name he gave you. He said, in my name, cast out devils. He credited his name to you. He gave you his name as a gift. So you don't lack anything. The problem is that you don't know what you have. So you can have a gun and be running from somebody who has a stick. And that's the condition of many Christians. And then you need to know the revelation of who God has made you. Oh man, I am an ambassador of Christ. I'm a high commissioner here. I'm not a citizen of earth. I see people fighting, killing themselves. I'm Igbo. I'm Idoma. I'm thief. God bless you. Continue to be an Igbo man. Some say I'm a bonified Igbo man. I'm a bonified Nigerian. And they are talking with pride. No wonder the things that happen to Nigerians happen to you. I'm not denying where I came from. But I am an ambassador sent to Nigeria. I live from Nigeria. I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm a member of the family of God. The Bible said, pray to God the Father, who is the father of the family that is in heaven and that is on earth. Ephesians 3, from verse 14 to 16. I'm part of heavenly family. God is my father. When Jesus resurrected, he said, tell them, I'm going to my God and their God my father and their father so I am a son of God 
and I'm an ambassador of Jesus. I'm a pilgrim on the face of the earth. I'm a warrior that does not entangle himself with civilian affairs. I'm a soldier of Christ. I'm a witness of the life of God. That's what God has made me. So if I come to any place where there is lack, see, ambassadors don't fight for themselves. When they have need, they call headquarters. And anywhere an ambassador is located, ceases to be part of that country. Go to the American embassy and say you are in Nigeria. See the war you will trigger. The American embassy may be situated in Abuja, but it's not Abuja. That is America. The moment you enter there, you have entered America. If you do anything there, you have violated bilateral relationship and it can trigger war. Do you know you can't arrest somebody inside there? So everywhere a Christian is, that is heaven. But if you don't know, you are troubled. See, if I come here, here is heaven. And sickness does not exist in heaven. Poverty does not exist in heaven. Pain does not exist in heaven. So that revelation alone generates power. That's why you need to know who your God is. And our God cannot lie. If he says so, that is how it is. 2 Corinthians 5, 20. It says, now are ye ambassadors of Christ. I'm an ambassador. I'm a high commissioner. I represent heaven's interest. And anywhere I show up, heaven show up. See, sometimes you want to manifest the power of God. And you are not feeling the anointing. Those of you who are preachers, you know what I'm saying. A revelation must sponsor action that day. And these are some of the things that come into our spirit. I have the righteousness of God. I reign in life. And so there's sickness here. I want to reign. And the sickness will give way. I'm an ambassador of Jesus. Anywhere I come, I introduce the atmosphere of heaven. Sickness can't exist in heaven. And so in the name of Jesus, anything not of heaven, I command you to go. He has no choice but to obey. Revelation. This is why many don't walk in power. You are conscious of your village. You are conscious of your ancestors. They say, ah, this one is a traditional something. No? Uh -huh. The traditional something will come. It will come and make more demands. The way some people exhort Satan. They say, ah, ah, the king of our village. If he talks, rivers will dry up. Ah, rivers. The other time he spoke, rivers dry. He slapped a tree and the tree dried up. Exhorting Satan. What is a tree drying up? Before he knew that trees dried up, Jesus spoke to the fig tree. He dried from his root. Before they know that rivers can dry, Moses stretched his rod and the river dried up. What are you talking about? Those are elementaries. Tell him to die and wake up. Let's begin from resurrection. Tell your king to die and wake up. Let's begin from there. Because the one we follow, he spoke about it. He said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up again. And the Bible said, on the third day, when they came to the tomb, the tomb was empty and they were looking for him. Mary Magdalene said to the gardener, where have you kept him? He thought he was talking to gardener and suddenly he turned and said, Mary. And when Mary looked, he said, Rabboni, the king has risen. The tomb is empty. He's the one that ruled over Hades. And he didn't just defeat death. Before he stood up, all the demons, all the principalities, all the powers ganged up against him. They say, when he was in heaven, we couldn't get him. When he was on earth, we couldn't get him. Now you are in hell. We will lock hell and deal with you here. Ah, ah, ah. The Bible says, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a public show of them triumphing over them by the cross and when he was done destroying them he collected the key of Hades he collected the key of death and he showed up he said all hail the king all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me you go in that power I'm going in the power of God I'm going in the anointing of God I'm going in the glory of God somebody show Oh, there is no 
you. I know there may be cancer. Your God is bigger than cancer. I know there may be poverty. Your God is bigger than poverty. And he didn't just claim to be bigger than them. He destroyed them on the cross. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we were healed. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Rich as he was. He became poor that you and I might become rich. He destroyed them. And he didn't just destroy them. He made you a witness. You are the proof that everything he claimed is so. This is the first anchor of spiritual power. Have a revelation of your God. Have a revelation of what he has done for you. And have a revelation of who he has made you. Sit down for a moment. Oh, time. Thank you, Father. See, if this is all you know, be intoxicated already. Be intoxicated. These are spiritual legalities. Nothing can change them. Every being in heaven knows. Every being in hell knows. Only you don't know. That's why I say my people perish for the lack of knowledge. But tonight you know. Tonight you know that he made you a king and a priest. And where the word of the king is, there is what? Power. Who can say unto him, what doest thou? You are a king. You are a priest. Revelation 1, 6. Where the word of the king is, there is what? Power. When I talk, there is power. Not because I'm feeling anything. Because I'm a king. Because I'm a priest. So power issues out of my words. That's what he has made me. And then the second trigger for spiritual power is consciousness. He said in Galatians, Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1. He said if you say you are risen with Christ. That means if you live at the level of the resurrection. The level of the resurrection is a realm beyond the grave. It's a realm beyond death. It's a realm beyond poverty. It's a realm beyond sickness. He said if you live in that realm. He said let your consciousness. Let your affection. Go to verse 1. If you be risen with Christ, if you live in the realm of the resurrection, it says, seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. And I wish I have time here to talk to you about the hand of God. Verse 2. It says, set your affection, set your mind, set your emotion, set your consciousness on the things above, not on the things on the earth. Verse 3. He said, for you are dead. This is the legality. You are dead. Your life is hid with Christ in God. You are in Christ. Christ is in God. That's where you think from. Set your affection. Most of you set your mind on the problem. And you know the problem. Anything you set your mind on, you magnify it. Anything you set your mind on, you process it and animate it. This is why you can't set your mind on the problem. In Romans 4, from verse 18 to 20, speaking about Abraham, he said, Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations? He said, He was not mindful of Sarah's womb that was now dead, nor his body that was dead. He said, He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. He was strong in faith, 
giving glory to God. He put his mind on what God said. This is why Romans 8, 5, 6 said, to be carnally minded, to be earthly minded, naturally minded, fleshly minded, he said it's death. He said, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Consciousness is a trigger of spiritual power. This is why we pray for long to reset and to reprogram, to tune our minds. Because your mind is like a radio frequency. Anything you focus on, you download that reality. So we set our minds only on God. This is why we fast. This is why we meditate on scripture. To set our minds. So the prayer, the fasting, the meditation is not the big deal. It's what it does to your mind. You are reprogramming yourself to think the God frequency. Because now you have the mind of Christ. He said the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. Neither can he know them. They are spiritually discerned. So you must set your mind to be able to receive it. You want to heal the sick, set your mind. You want to prophesy, set your mind. You want to address your generation, set your mind. The power is already there, but you are tuning the wrong things. Those days, one of the things I did to help my mind, I will save my last cash and travel to Lagos. I just want to sit down and see what these generals are doing. That's all that sometimes only seeing bless me. I can go for a conference. I don't even remember the message. I just see the way Pastor Chris walks out. The way he's demonstrating. And I'm, how can a man operate like this? And for the next one year, I'm seeing myself do the same thing. It looked like caricature. But today we are living it. I'll travel. I just want to see Bishop Oedeko. He just shows up like a lion. As if the devil is nothing. And the way, the audacity of the manifestation. That's all that blesses me. The audacity. He just talks like a God. And when we show up, we didn't have revelation. But we started talking like that. Get out, Satan. Any scripture he quotes, we will cram it and quote it like him. See, at that level, that's not how God wants us to be, but that was how we were wooed. There are times when I just watch Jacob, I'm just watching. The way sickness, the guy intimidates sickness. Somebody will come with cancer. Jaco will act as if it's nothing. Sir, this is cancer. He said, come up here. No, 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 no. That's the wrong. What if it doesn't happen? He doesn't care. Now let's, let's deal with this. And he will hold it in the name of Jesus. Before he finishes, cancer will remove. And I'm, what audacity is this? My mind was being fine-tuned. Fine-tuned. Find you. So when I now got the revelation, my mind was ready. Take me to a stadium, I will preach boldly. When I started going to nations, they said, Ha! When you are traveling, better prepare. It's not easy to preach in another nation. I didn't pray about it once. You know why? Those days we were in Lagos, our minds were ready. As you sit down, the person sitting by your side is a Filipino. The person sitting by your left is a German. As you are walking, you go for eat for lunch. During the break, you are seeing Russians. You are seeing Armenians. You are seeing Englishmen. They helped us. So our minds were ready. So you don't see a white man. You are, no. We lay hands on them. They go under the power. The first time I had the opportunity to minister to the white, it was normal. Your skin color is not a factor. My mind was ready. I didn't change my message because I was in England. No. And when I was ministering, I saw all of them as men. They were under the power. Papa, Tete, Kesusa, Parok. It does something to you. Glory to God. Consciousness. Listen, you need to start developing the consciousness. You know what Pastor Chris used to tell us those days? 
He said, don't let money intimidate you. He said, it's just a figure. One billion is a figure. Hundred million is a figure. They shouldn't come money and you start shaking. It's just a figure. And my friend, Reverend Hughes, came with an, a, 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 a develop a mantra for his students. They say, we need 20 million. You hear the whole church. This is a campus church. Ice cream money. We need 50 million. You hear the whole student. Ice cream money. And they will raise it. Because if you conquer it here, you will conquer it on ground. Consciousness. If you think a church of 10,000 is too big, you will never pastor it. If you think preaching in the crusade ground and healing the sick, cripples walking is too big, you will never see it. Because your mind is the conductor of spiritual power. I'll talk about mental power, so let me stop them. The third thing that makes for spiritual power is consecration. You must yield to the Holy Spirit because he is the animator of spiritual realities. Yield. That's what consecration is about. Yielding to the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Ghost have preeminence so that he can walk through you. He said, though we war in the flesh. He said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. He said, they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. 2 Corinthians 10 from verse 3 to 5. Casting down imagination. Every high standing thing that opposes itself above the knowledge of God and bringing all things under the captivity of the Holy Ghost. Bring everything under captivity. Bring your body under captivity. Bring your mind under captivity. Let the Holy Ghost rule through you. That's consecration. Glory to God. If you do these three things, you will see spiritual power. You may not feel anything. Just go, talk, and see what will happen. You will be amazed the things that will be happening when you just talk. Because revelation, consciousness, consecration has conquered it already. Everybody walking in power, they know this. This is what they do. Dr. Paul said when he wanted his church to grow to 20,000, every room, he wrote 20,000. Even on the wall of the battle. So that 20,000 will become part of his reality. And as he kept praying, fasting, prophesying, when church crossed 20,000, they didn't know. Because they had already conquered it in their spirit. Nothing happens by chance. They are deliberate. You can do anything. The question is, do you know the scripture that legalizes it? Do you sustain the consciousness that can bet it? And do you have the consecration that can sustain it? If you can answer these three questions, spiritual power becomes a byproduct in your life. Power is not for apostles. It's not for prophets. It's not for evangelists. It's not for pastors. It's not for teachers. It's for everyone that believes. He said, these signs shall follow everyone that believe for there's a protocol hallelujah now let me run through the other ones the second dimension of power is mental power Hosea chapter 6 verse 4 my people perish for the lack of knowledge Daniel eleven thirty two. They that know their God shall be strong and do exploit. Job 38 verse 4. Declare now if you have understanding. Anybody who has understanding, anybody who has mental power can declare. Understanding is mental power. And mental power is a gateway to manifestation. Declare now. That means if you don't have understanding, you don't have mental power. And you don't have authority to declare. You know what he was talking about? The power of the constellation. Because he began from verse 1. He said, who is this that darkens counsel by wars without knowledge? And he started asking questions. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Where were you when I commanded the waters to keep their boundaries? He said, declare. That means do those things if you have understanding. Letting you know that mental power, which is understanding, is the key to manifestation. Anybody who understands can walk in power. 
Second Chronicles 26, verse 3 and 5. And Uzziah was 16 years when he began to rule. And the Bible said he ruled for 52 years. Why did he reign? In verse 5, he said, because he sought God. After the understanding of Zacharias, the instruction of Zacharias, who had understanding of the visions of God. Second Chronicles 12.32, the sons of Isaac. They said these were men that had understanding of times and seasons and knew what Israel ought to do. The heads of them were 200. All their brethren were at their commandment. Anyone who has understanding has power to rule. And that is what we call mental power. But there is a protocol for accessing it. And the Bible littered them. Because usually it's precept upon precept, line upon line. Here a little, there a little. But if you search diligently, you'll find it. There is what to do to gain understanding. There is what to do to access mental power. And it's littered in scripture. I give you five of them very quickly. Number one is to follow instruction. Anybody who follows the instructions of God becomes wise. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you dearly beloved, be not be conformed to this world. It says, present your body rather as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And it says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew? It's by receiving the precepts of God. He said, for the precepts of God, they make us wise. So a man who will renew his mind will obey the speakings of the oracles of God. Thy word is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. He brings renewal. He brings illumination. So if you want to be wise, you must learn to receive and obey the word of God. Over time, you will see that your life will attain precision that brain cannot produce. The second way to gain mental power is to ask in prayer. James chapter 1 verse 5, it says, whoever lacks wisdom shall ask of God that giveth liberally and unbraided not. I'm showing you how to take charge of your generation through intelligence that cannot be gainsaid. The third way to access mental power is by sustaining the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 9 verse 10. Job 28 28. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is wisdom. The knowledge of the holy. This is understanding. Any man who becomes deliberate about reverencing God begins to grow in understanding. That's one of the ways of accessing supernatural intelligence. Number four, how do you grow mental power? By studying. Second Timothy 2.15, study to show yourself approved unto God. A watchman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Even in the secular world, we know that if you task your brain by studying and exercising, your brain power increases. Too many don't study. Their knowledge on everything is shallow. That's why they don't have the ability to articulate and to analyze. And because they don't have that ability, they are always behind in life. Study. See. Read. Study. Paul said, until I come. 2 Timothy 4.13 Give attendance to reading. No shallow person can lead anybody. No shallow-minded person can exercise authority. Every question they ask, I don't know. How can you reign? It takes knowledge and understanding to reign. And the key to accessing that power is by studying. See, tax your brain. The way your brain gyms is to study and try to memorize. When you do it, after a while you see that you'll be having headaches because the brain is rusty. But when you continue, a point will come, the brain will boost. Read the word of God and read every meaningful document. He said, anything that is pure, anything that has virtue, anything that is full of love, he said, think on those things. Develop your mind 
by walking it. Number five, how do you develop mental power? By meditation. And meditation is different from studying. Philippians 4 verse 8. Meditation has two layers. The first layer is to picture. We call it contemplation. And the second layer is to mutter. Agar, talk it to yourself. Philippians 4 verse 8, quickly. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, virtue, and if there be any praise, think on those things. So don't read only Bible. Read whatsoever things are true. Read whatsoever things are, are honest. Read whatsoever things are just. Read whatsoever things are pure. Read whatsoever things are lovely. Sometimes I sit down for two hours. You know what I'm studying? Planes. Studying about aerodynamics. I'm looking at the fastest plane in the world. How they were designed. And I'm seeing F-35 Raptor. I'm seeing F-22 Raptor. I'm seeing, uh, how do they call it? The Russian Typhoon. I'm seeing all kinds of planes. And their maneuverability. Ah, they are stealth, balance in the air. Their ability to hide under radar. And as I'm reading those things and watching, the Holy Ghost is teaching me some things. That you see, in life, speed is a function of engine. So if you want to run, increase your capacity. Meanwhile, I was studying jet. I was studying jet. The Holy Ghost is teaching me some. He said, don't run with anybody. Just develop your engine. You'll discover that your speed will increase. And then when I'm driving my Land Cruiser, I see other uh, Civic, Toyota Corolla, struggling on high speed. I'm on 80 and I come with stability. Foo, 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 foo. I leave them behind. I didn't get it from the Bible. I was watching aeroplanes. S27 Typhoon and you are seeing different shapes. So if you want to maneuver, you need posture. You need posture to maneuver. You need engine capacity. That's why if you are proud, that posture does not help speed. If you are proud, you are running like this. No, it doesn't help speed. But when you become humble, you are light. You can just say sorry and go. Why the proud man is using two weeks to think of how he will say sorry, you are gone. But you will learn it. Give the Lord a shot. Bible now now I've shifted I'm looking at jets and then sometimes I'm looking at submarines what is wrong with you I'm tasking my mind and then sometimes you are preaching that thing you read that has no concern with ordination the whole revelation of the message will come from it I can teach you a sermon now on how to succeed in life from aeroplane from into power to body shape, to stability, to maneuverability. And you'll be wondering, well, which Bible does he read? It's not Bible. It's mental power. The Holy Ghost breathes on it. Whatsoever things are true, if you think on these things. And then the point comes when you talk it to yourself. That's the higher level, the Hagar level. Joshua 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. He said, thou shalt meditate upon it day and night to see that you do what is written therein. Then you make your way prosperous. That means it's not God that makes your way prosperous. You make your way prosperous. That's why we can't blame God for our failures. Anybody succeeding is doing something. Develop your mind. See, many Christians have nothing upstairs. That's why even the Holy Ghost is limited. As I'm talking to you now, if I talk to five different congregations, my introduction is different. The moment I look at them, I can access the quality of people they are. It will affect the way I talk. Because I, I know how men think. I know. I can look at you in five seconds and I can change my whole sermon. Or the whole presentation. Things will just arrange in the head. Quack, 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 it has finished. Even the number of scriptures I can retain is high. It's high because this mind has been processed to retain. Do you know I counsel people who are businessmen? 
they are struggling with their business and I say talk to me they talk for 10 minutes and I analyze the business I'm not there I, will, I, I analyze it for them it looks as if I'm a consultant in the business world because the mind of Christ is there and it has been developed we ask for more wisdom we exercise it through study exercise it through meditation and every day we are enriching the mind some people even in their own field they are not vast sometimes I carry my phone and I'm checking what am I checking what are the five things that will make business succeed in Abuja and I can tell you five businesses that if you do in this city you must succeed because of feasibility study all of that is here develop your mind develop your mind feed your mind every day don't only feed your belly your belly is for reinforcement this is the one that leads you so feed here more than you feed here shall be added unto you. I've taught you before, there is a universal order of prosperity. Produce something, you will make money. Sharpen your gift, market it, you will make money. Investment, master the art of investment, you will make money. And then have a rich father, you can inherit money. That's universal. So I told you in this kingdom, we don't only work with universal dimension. Why? Because universal prosperity does not give glory to God. That's why in addition to universal prosperity, we also have kingdom prosperity. And the best way, you know, kingdom prosperity is an entrustment. 
And the first way to access that level of entrustment is to seek first the kingdom. If God sees that you are out for his kingdom, he begins to empower you because you are like a trust fund. As I am like this, even now, ask Pastor Godwin. Last year, we gave money to more than seven ministries. Some for house rent, some to build their churches, some for crusade. And to date, on a monthly basis, there are ministries that are not encounter Jesus that we give money in millions. Millions. Because it's not just about, oh, encounter Jesus program. No, it's about kingdom. When you see that the kingdom of God needs to advance, you will support it. it. Your heart is there. You can be going somewhere, you see a church without roof, you stop. Who is the pastor here? Please, this is my little support. That's not your church. That's why I tell you, we don't teach you giving so that you give to us. We teach you giving so that you live it as a lifestyle. You can be bringing money here for us to do a project. And you see another church has no roof. And rainy season is coming. If you sow there is kingdom. Because as far as God is concerned, it's the same company with different departments. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. He said all other things shall be added to you. So the people who have king, kingdom financial power, that money is an entrustment. Because God knows if that money is with them, kingdom will move. Ask yourself, which kingdom project is a regular part of your, your spending? From weekly basis to monthly basis to yearly basis that you are vitally involved in. From soul winning to welfare to building. Just, just ask yourself, is there any kingdom project that is part of your monthly budget? If it's not there, you are not a candidate for kingdom wealth. Because kingdom wealth is an entrustment. Seek here first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Anything that makes God become God in the life of people, you must support it with all your heart. If God sees that, he will give you more than you ever asked for. Number two, follow divine instructions. If you want kingdom wealth or economic power, Luke 22, 35, when I sent you without pause, without script, without sander, lack you anything, they say, no, we lack nothing. Nobody who follows the leading of God or divine instruction can lack. 1 Kings 17, verse 1 to 6, Elijah showed up before Ahab, before God whom I stand, there shall be no rain or dew. The moment he finished, even him became a victim of the famine, except as divine instruction came. And the Bible said, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Verse 2, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, verse 3, get thee hence, turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook chariot that is before Jordan. Verse 4, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook that, and I have commanded ravens to feed thee there. If he didn't follow divine instruction, he too would have died of the famine. So what entrusts you with economic power is divine instruction. Number three, accessing economic power make impact Kingdom resources gravitate in the direction of those making impact. You will be shocked. There are many people who give to us here. Their uncles are pastors. They don't remember them. Impact compels resources to be trafficked. Anybody who makes impact, he has. See, people can't hold themselves from giving them. Luke chapter 8, from verse 1 to 3. Look at Jesus' ministry. It was impact that brought money. Anybody making impact has economic wealth. And it came to pass afterwards that he went through every city and every village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom. And the twelve were with him. First dimension of impact. Every city and every village heard his voice. Every city, every village. Verse 2. Quickly. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities 
Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. Are you seeing where money is coming from? From impact. Heal them, cast out demons from them. Go to verse 3. And Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's stewards, and Susanna, and many others, which ministered unto him of their substance. So they didn't just show up to give him. He cast out demons from them. He healed the sick. Healed them of infirmity. They had no choice but to respond with gratitude. He didn't need to ask them for it. And notice, they didn't give him of their leftovers. They gave him of their substance. You can't receive substance from anybody that your life is not impacting. The moment you start making impact, even those who don't know you will bless you. Did you not read about the queen of the south? that brought wealth to Solomon. It was the testimony of impact she had. She didn't know the, the guy from anywhere. Parables, wise sayings. Everybody's living by his principles. Who is this? They don't come empty-handed to impactful people. When you come to a man of impact, you must come with substance. So if you want kingdom wealth and financial power, you need a lot of impact. Even God said in Deuteronomy 8.18, you shall remember the Lord your God. It is him that giveth the power to get what? Not for pleasure. That you may establish his covenant. Anybody making impact accesses the power for wealth. Number four, faithful stewardship. If you waste God's resources, you won't have it again. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 1 and 2. Faithful stewardship. They say, let a man so account of us as of ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Verse 2. Moreover, it is required of a steward that a man be found faithful. So if you are not faithful in stewardship, the power to get wealth will leave you. Some people, the first time God exposed them to 50 million, they waste it without accountability. Ask my people here. Everything we are doing, if it's kingdom money, you must account for every one cover. You can't just show up and tell me three million has finished. How? Give a breakdown. Because I don't want to struggle. It's not my money. I tell them kingdom resources is an entrustment. And it comes from people's sacrifice. It comes from people's faith. It comes from people's worship. It comes from people's blood. When God gives it to you, you must account for it. Look at Jesus. Even when Jesus multiplied bread, that look as if, oh, it's miracles. When they finish, they say, gather every fragment, not every loaf. Gather every fragment. Let nothing be wasted. And they gather 12 baskets. Why do you think they were accounting for everything? Because if you waste, you will no longer have. Everything God gives you, you account for it. So that you can account, you can get more. Luke 16, verse 10 to 12. He said, if you are not faithful in that which is another man's, who will give you yours? If you are not faithful in little, you are not faithful in much. So you can't have much. You want to have much, you must be faithful in little. Some of you are at a level where all you get at the end of the month is 50,000. And you feel 50,000 is nothing. You will never have 10 million if you can't account for the 50,000. Faithful, still watching. And it's not just when you have ministry. Even the salary they pay you, God is checking. How do you spend it? How much go to the kingdom? How much go for reinvestment? How much go for your welfare? How much goes for savings? If you can't manage it, forget about ruling any investment. Power to get wealth. Finally, accessing the power to get wealth, covenant lifestyle. Acts 3.25 he said, you are children of the prophets, and therefore you are children of the covenant. And what is the covenant? Genesis 8, verse 20 to 22. Seed time and harvest. Summer and winter, cold and heat shall not cease as long as the earth remaineth. And then you think that's Old Testament reality. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6 to 8. He that sweats sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that sweats bountifully shall reap bountifully. He said, for... If you give not out of necessity or grudgingly, he said, God loves you because God loves a cheerful giver. And he said, God is able to make all grace abound. That you always having all sufficiency may abound in every good work. So a man who doesn't practice the way of the covenant can never have kingdom wealth. And 
showing you. See, this is what, show, it's not just emotion and excitement. Though. Learn truths and leave them. Learn truths and leave them. You can sit under an anointed atmosphere prophesying over you, but you'll be poor for 30 years. Because you are not paying the necessary requirements to be able to be entrusted with kingdom finance. I'm telling you why many prayer warriors are poor. I'm telling you why many evangelists are poor. They have spiritual power, but they don't have financial power. If you want to have holistic victory, you must know what principle applies to what. What controls finance is different from what controls healing. You may know what controls healing and die of poverty. You may know what controls finance and die of sickness. For you to have holistic victory, you must know what rule what. That's what gives you absolute dominion. And then you have relational power. I studied the life of David and I discovered it was not just the anointed that made David king. It was Jonathan that made David king. First, king, first Samuel 18 verse 1 to 4. After David destroyed Goliath, David gave a speech and immediately the Bible said Jonathan removed his robe, gave to David and bowed down and worshipped him. Saul came and insulted him. He's about to take your throne. And Jonathan endorsed it. When Saul wanted to kill David, Jonathan was the one that taught him the secret of escape. David would have died. So there are certain relationships that if you don't have and manage well, you may be anointed, but you will not have impact and you will not succeed. So relationship is a vital ingredient of power. And for you to be able to regulate relationship, there is a power that controls it. That's why I quoted for you from 2 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles 12, 22. The Bible said, daily men joined themselves to David until his host became like the host of God. There is a power that controls relationship. When you see people gathering around somebody, there's something he has. And there is something he's using to nurture that thing that he possesses. People don't have time. Oh. If people have time for you, there's a power on your life. And that power demands certain consecration for it to be sustained. How do you sustain relational power? Which is very vital in your rising. Number one, wise comportment. 1 Samuel 18 verse 14 to 16. The Bible said David behaved himself wisely before the king. And so the king became afraid of him. He said, but the whole of Israel submitted to David. You can't live anyhow and expect to command the admiration of people. People have standards. People have moral values. They admire you to the degree that you align to standards and moral values. You live carelessly, nobody can associate with you. That's why even people that people associate with, when they violate moral codes, people leave them. And you find them angry that hey, those who are loyal to you in your hard time, or that hard time is different from scandal and ridicule. Don't live carelessly and expect people to endorse you in evil. You see them using all kinds of manipulation, but I gave you food. Moral values are superior to food. If you violate them, men will desert you. You want to command relational power, then you must comport yourself wisely. Live your life according to value systems. Number two, how to sustain relational power. Genuine love for people and not what they have to give. The moment people discover that you are a parasite, you will irritate them. Anybody who can sustain relationship is somebody who loves people genuinely. John 21 verse 15 to 16, Jesus came to Peter and said, Simon, lovest thou me more than this? He said, Lord, you know I do. He said, keep my sheep, my lamb. Simon, lovest thou me more than this? Lord, you know I do. Keep my lamb. Three times. The third time, lovest thou me more than this? He said, yes, you know. He said, keep my sheep. No relationship thrives except as love is proven. There are people who only call you when they have needs. The moment you see their call, there's no food at home. The moment you see their call, they need school fees. The moment you see their call, they need small cash. If they do it once, 
twice, thrice. The next time they call, you block them. It's not your fault. Everybody hates parasites. It's a wicked disposition. And so if you want to build the power for relationship, you must be selfless and sacrificial. Only sacrificial people can sustain relationship and purpose-driven relationship. John 15, 13, Jesus said, no greater love than this that a man can show to his friend, that he gives his life for his friend. Jesus is teaching us that meaningful relationship tries. See, make sure you show genuine love. Don't be with people because of what they can give you. It's wickedness. And that's why many are not sustaining. Every four months, they have a new friend. You will never see them with somebody that have been with them for 10 years. And they are accusing everybody. It's because their heart is wicked. They only use people. They don't love people. Anybody who discovers you are using him will depart from you. Number three, how do you build relational power? Is by sustaining integrity. Ephesians 4.25 Proverbs 25.19 If you are somebody who is not consistent, you say one today, say another one tomorrow, people will become careful of you because they want to defend you while they are in the heat of the battle. You will now call them aside and say, I'm sorry, that thing I said is not like that. Really? And you allowed us to get to this level. They will never stand with you again. You want to build relationships that matter? Be honest. Be truthful. Have integrity. See, it's better to tell people the truth, let them leave you, than to keep them with a lie. The day they discover it, they will not only leave you, they will hate you. I'm telling you why many don't have support from men. Number four, how do you sustain relationships through respect and honor? Philippians 2, verse 3 and 4, the Bible said to esteem others more than yourself. If you don't genuinely honor people, even those who are under you, honor them. Every human being commands respect. If you treat people like rats, a day will come they will say, you are not my God. They will walk away. Show people respect. They are not slaves. They are not slaves. Let them know that they are worthy of honor. The Bible said in 1 Peter 2.17, say, honor all men. There's a place for rebuke. There's a place for correction. There's a place for chastisement. But they must know that you honor them. That's how you build lasting relationship. And if you find anybody who has that power, he knows these things. Honor. Number five, how do you build relational power? It's through humility. Again, Philippians 2, verse 3. Proverbs 13, verse 10. The Bible said, every strife comes from pride. Everywhere there is contention. The Bible says pride is at the root of it. Every contention has pride as its root. And so if there will be peace, then there will be humility for that to happen. You need relationship. I was telling them in the pastor's training yesterday, when Jesus died and he needed to be buried, none of the apostles who were praying could help. The Bible said it was a secret disciple that had the power to help. There are those who talk to God. There are those who talk to the governor. If you only have those who talk to God, you'll be in trouble. Jesus wouldn't have had a tongue to be buried, except as those who talk to governor showed up and say, don't worry, we will give him a grave that nobody has ever been buried in. That's the kind of power they have. And Jesus could sustain such relationship. Why do you think you'll find him from time to time? He was in the house of Pharisees. That's collectors, whining and drinking. And then some of these fari fake prophets will come and say, Imagine, he's dining with tax collectors. How can a prophet eat with tax collectors? Be joking. If you don't know how to build other type of relationship, you will be in trouble. 
There are some programs you want to do, they will tell you on the day of the program, we won't give you the hall and we won't allow the program. You need one call. At every point in your life, on every corridor that matters, you should be able to make two phone calls that can create change. Benny Hinn told the story. He needed to pay $10 million and he didn't have the hard cash anywhere. And he had, I think, 48 hours to pay the money. As if that was not enough, Reinhard Bonke showed up and told him, I have a crusade in Nigeria and God told me to come to you that you will give me $1 million. Benny Hinn laughed and said, wait, wait. All I have now is 300000 Reinhard Bonke said, Give me the money and you will have your $10 million. Benny Hinn said, I am about to be disgraced from the, the TV station. This is all I have. He said, God said, give me. And you know, these are men of God. He knew the guy was not lying. God said, you should give me. Benny Hinn now. <laughs> and signed the check and gave the advocate. The Lord bless you. And he left. Ben him prayed, prayed, prayed. 24 hours to go. Shame was by the corner. And he remembered there's a man called Ora Robert. They have been friends for 20 years. Sometimes his wife goes to cook for Ora Robert. That's why I spoke about respect. And he called Ora Robert. I have problem. I need 10 million. What do I do? Ora Robert say I'm coming. I have that power. So me, I can raise money. You have relationship. And when a robot showed up, and when he flew him down, went to the studio, they did a program. He was thinking or a robot to start quoting, give, it shall be given unto you. The liberal soul shall be made fat. Or a robot didn't say anything. When he finished teaching and preaching, as he was rounding up, he said, Benny Hinn is in trouble. Help him. And left. Benny Hinn was so angry. I flew you down here. I'm going to give you an honorarium. Is this all you came to say? Or a robot said, that's enough. And he left. Six hours later, some Arabs began to call. Not Christian, Arabs. And when they call, we heard Benny Hinn has problem. Send us the, the account. They will send one million. Send 300,000. So usually Benny Hinn taught his people. When people give, pray for them. They wanted to pray. They said, we don't need your prayer. Just tell him to keep wearing his white suit. It wasn't Christians that gave the money. Arab Mughus. Because the wealth of the Gentiles shall be transferred to the kingdom. But how did it happen? It was not through Benihi. It was through Rarobos. See, there are some people that don't have money, but they can make you rich. There are some people that are not governors, but they can make you governors. And so if you will be a governor, if you will be wealthy, you need to know how to sustain them. Some speak in tongues, some give money, others give connection. If you think church is only about prayer warriors, you are joking. Rehad Bonke came to Nigeria for crusade. Guess who gave him money? He was in the hotel, there was a knock on the door. Door opened. Who was there? General Sani Abacha. And gave him money in Ghana must go. Take for your crusade. He was not going to attend. But there is a power. See, there are many types of power. Don't neglect anyone. Me, I love this type of power. There is a power you have that governors will look for you. That's why I said the Gentiles shall come to thy life. Kings shall come to the brightness of thy rising. Thank God for prayer warriors. But we need kings. We need Gentiles. We need businessmen. He said, you shall suck the breast of kings. He said, strangers shall stand to build thy wall. He said, power. Go and read your Bible. Do you know when David was compelled to God? It was not when he was praying. It was when men came. Daily. First Chronicles 12, 22. Men joined themselves to David until his host became like the host of God. There are certain men that if God add them to your life, your life will change. I read about T.D. Jakes. Mighty preacher. Preaching many years, sweating. Nothing happened. Until 
one man heard this message and said, who is this? Fly him here. And they flew him on a private jet. The moment he landed, the man told him, tomorrow your message will be on TBN. That was how his ministry changed. One man. One man. One man. See, there's a power that provokes connectivity. That was what Joseph had. He was in prison. Nobody cared. You see, until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. The king sent for to lose it. Some of you kings will look for you this week. to fall for you in place and places. Somebody will hear about that business and move you by 10 years. I prophesy over you the power for honorable connection. Let it rest upon you now. Somebody was sharing a testimony with me last Sunday. They have been laboring in their real estate for like two years now. Even me, I supported them with money. Lo and behold, after a powerful service like this, his spirit was charged, made the prophetic declaration, and left. Somebody he helped more than five years ago when he was in prison. He was wrongly accused, thrown into the prison. When he, he gained justice to him for himself, he left, but he said, I will leave this person. And he helped the person. The person left the country. Suddenly, the person remembered him. Guess what the person sent to him? He couldn't even send it through bank. So he sent it through crypto. $500 million. You don't know what connection can do. Connection. If you meet the right people. Now, I prophesy over you. Everybody that needs to enter your life to change your story. Your steps are network now. Yeah, yeah. I spoke, they gave me 14 million. 
Even the venue that we are using, Lord and Sawyer came to town. He needed somewhere to do his battle axe retreat. And I said, okay, let me drive you to a place. We entered an RCCG church to beg a pastor to give him his place to use. When the pastor saw me, he stood up. What? He said, miracles are real. I've looked for you for two years. Now God brought you to my office. The first thing that happened was that they gave them that hall immediately for the battle axe retreat. Then the hall we were using was the hall they used before. He called the manager, followed up, and we got that hall at an alarmingly reduced rate. Do you know what connection can do? It's only God that makes men. But one of the channels God uses is men. Can you lift your hands? It's time for baptism. Spiritual power, if it's mental power, if it's financial power, if it's relational power, if it's governmental power, make a demand now. This is your hour. Papa Seda. now oh. I wish I could drag this service to another realm but we are out of time lower the volume please be conscious of what you are asking for because you will have it you will have it make that demand now and be specific I release the sound of the heavens the sound of creation, Shakaina is here. We release, we I release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is here. We cry, Holy, 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 unto Yeshua, Shakaina is here. We cry, Holy, 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 unto Yeshua. 
have seen a measure of these powers. I've seen a measure of it. Now I want to pray for you. If you can't, stop praying now. Just lift your hands. If we go brutal, we will overstretch time. We are supposed to close from here latest 8 10. Father, ushers, God will touch some of them as a token. The Bible said he sent his war to Jacob, he lightened upon Israel. So there are those who receive the first fruit. Father, so ushers, you will help them. Bring them here. Let me place something on their lives. Everyone here making demand on power. You say we shall ask, we will receive. We shall seek, we will find. We shall knock, the door will be open. Now, 14 of them, by the spirit of might, let there be an anointing, a grace, a baptism, and an empowerment from the left to the right, from the front to the back, to those watching online. Take that power now. Take that power. Ability to raise the dead. Ability to control wealth in every currency. Ability to build connection across race, across nations. Ability to sustain wisdom, dimension, superlative. Take that power. I shall bring that quickly. We will never be the same. We've taught your grace. at a global level. I don't know who I'm talking to, but the Bible said he lifted the beggar from the dung here, establishes him among princes that they may inherit throne. In the name of Jesus, the power that establishes, carry that power now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now lift your hands toward heaven. The presence of God will descend upon you now like a weight. I don't want to stretch too much because of our time. These ones, listen. God will make them global phenomena in their respective fields of endeavor. You don't have to be a, an apostle or a prophet. In your real estate business, in your banking business, in your farming business, in the name of Jesus. He said, thou anointest my head with fresh oil. Thou exalted my horn like the horn of the unicorn. There are seven of you that are about to become global influences and phenomena. Father, wherever they are standing, on ground, online, the same mercy I have received from you, I extend to them now, by the Spirit, in the name of Jesus, let that oil rest 